All right, what's up guys? So today we're gonna finally do a range test. I've got the battery and the battery inside the board all at 100%, which was what you kind of need to do with the voltages to make sure that everything works okay. So we're at the VeloWay here in Austin, Texas. Uh, it's a really cool three mile loop. So it's gonna give me the ability to just kind of stay on the same kind of path the whole time and figure out like how much range can I actually get out of this thing uh, with the modifications that we made. Now we're working with a 19 PSI. I weigh 135 pounds and we're gonna be on smooth pavement the whole way. I'm not sure how much like up and down uh, in elevation. I don't think a lot. I think it's pretty level throughout. Uh, but that gives you kind of the basis. If you're heavier than me or if you're riding different terrain, obviously you might lose some range and stuff. But this gives you a baseline to understand how far can you go if you make this modification using a 5 amp hour battery uh, connected through a vamp and ride setup to the one wheel pint. All right, that was super, super fun. Um, I haven't done, I've never done that much riding on a one wheel, all especially not like straight like that. I did the entire thing pretty much without stopping. I only stopped like once or twice uh, to drink a little water and let my feet rest because my feet got so tired. I am gonna look into some other like foot pads maybe in the future, but for right now I'm just on the stock stuff. So doing that much distance was quite a bit um, all at once. Um, before I tell you everything about like how far I went and how fast I went and all that stuff I want to tell you a quick couple of little notes that I've learned about this system uh, number one is I changed the way that I attached the circuit breaker to the board. Uh, I ended up cutting the little tabs off and I just used a piece of industrial strength Velcro. It's not going anywhere. Um, so that's it's a little cleaner and I was having a little bit of trouble with the edge of like the air valve barely tapping like the zip ties really um, so that was kind of annoying just once in a while I'd hear it um, it wasn't actually like hitting it hard or anything but this way it's all super clear so if you're going to do it I'd recommend just like kind of cutting off the tabs I just used like a kitchen knife uh, the other thing that I know is the cord I made the cord like way too long um, I think I noted that before um, so it's tricky to get the link just right I ended up adding a piece of uh, like a strap velcro right here on the on the uh, arm strap so that I can like get it to the right length and just strap it there easy solution but it will make your life a little bit nicer um, other than that I'm absolutely loving the thing it is so much more fun to ride now uh, I would definitely recommend it and if you have one of the older pints like I do on the older hardware this is the 5300 hardware with the 5042 firmware you can check that in your settings uh, definitely go through the controller pad because if you tap the power there your battery percentage will show correctly if you go through the back uh, which you may have to if you have one of the newer pints um, it won't show the battery uh, percentage correctly you'll have to go off of the voltages which I'll show you right here these are the voltages and when you should actually stop riding and that's going to be very important when you need to stop riding and I'll explain that later on why that is so I've got some stats here of what happened uh, on my ride so I can tell you one thing that the backpack being four pounds I barely noticed that there's much weight on my back at all there's no problem there the cord is no issue at all uh, the quick release works just fine all that good stuff uh, when I rode there was 10 mile an hour winds which doesn't really seem like a lot but 10 miles an hour when you're riding and it's a headwind definitely feels like a lot um, so it did slow me down at times causing the board to have more pushback at times um, and probably drop my range a little bit. So just take note of that. The Veloway has some elevation changes, including one pretty steep little hill. It's not very long though. It's probably only like maybe 60 feet or something. Um, but I believe it has about 100, 110 foot elevation, which isn't a ton, uh, but there were changes as I was riding. It wasn't completely flat. 
uh, which is more close to real world, obviously. So that was good. So I was able to ride from 100% down all the way down to 1%, and I was able to get 27 miles. That is so much. My feet were so done. I'd say after 20 miles, I was like, okay, man, I got to just keep riding because my feet are just getting tired, though. But uh, 27 miles, that's an amazing improvement on what I would get before. On just the stock battery, I would get like eight to 10 miles. And that's, you know, generous, honestly. A lot of people don't get that. It just depends on size, weight, all that stuff. So 27 miles, that's huge. Um, I ran two different apps while I was riding. I ran the one wheel app, and then I also ran a, uh, like a cycling app that I have for when I, I rode bikes. And in the one wheel app, it told me that my top speed during the time was 23 miles an hour. Now I do like to ride pretty fast. Um, you have to be careful with that because you can nosedive if you're riding really, really fast, but I like to push it. I typically cruise at like 18, 19 miles an hour on the pint. As long as I'm carving, I don't see a huge issue with it. Uh, your mileage may vary on that, so be very careful. I do re uh, recommend respecting the pushback for sure, uh, but I averaged a, about a 13 and a half uh, just just over 13 and a half miles an hour. That's how fast I was going on average. Uh, but the other app told me that my max speed was actually 24 miles an hour. So somewhere between 23 and 24 miles an hour is the fastest that I went during the ride. So I was definitely not going super, super slow. I was cruising my normal speeds, 17, 18, 19 miles an hour is kind of where I seem to sit uh, when I'm riding. Now, when I'm going, if I come up to like a hill, I will slow way down, uh, down to like the 12, 13, 14 miles an hour compared so that I'm not like maxing out the motor as I hit that undulation because that's when things can happen. So one thing that I've noticed that is extremely different and you really need to pay attention to when you're riding with an external battery like this compared to when you're riding with just a stock battery is when you get down to the lower percentages. I don't really recommend riding underneath like 10% battery on even just the internal battery. Um, but sometimes you're gonna have to do it, especially on group rides. I've gotten all the way down to 1% on group rides and been like eking out that last little bit going like three, five miles an hour, just trying to get back to wherever we started. And I haven't had any huge issues with that. That being said, when you're on the external battery, it feels like the low power pushback mode that it does isn't there. As I was cruising, I got down to like 3% battery. I was very close. I was probably like two blocks or something away from my starting point and it nosedived on me hard. I'm talking, I was going and it just shut off. I hit the ground, not fun, scraped up a little bit. I'm totally fine. I wear my gear, make sure you wear gear. I'm actually adding more gear to my, uh, to my collection after this ride. Um, but if you're gonna be running with an external setup, don't ride underneath 10%, just don't do it. It's not worth it. You can go charge, you have so much range already. The only reason I pushed it that far was so that I could really get an, uh, the final number so I could let you guys know this is how far you can get it to. But man, it was a very different nosedive. Um, I've had it almost nosedive on me and I've nosedived in the past on the internal battery and been able to like recover. Now, I could not recover on this one. There was no pulling the board back up. It happened so quick. Also, my legs were so toast from riding that far that I just don't think I had the muscle to be able to be like, pop and, and, and bring that nose back up. So if you're gonna push it, just be really prepared um, underneath that like 10% or so, because I don't think that the board acts the same way when you have an external battery connected as opposed to just the internal battery. So something definitely to note. Um, the other thing, a lot of people have asked me, how am I charging the board? So I'm charging the board currently using the original pint charger. Now that is a slower charge uh, than like the ultra chargers and the fast chargers and stuff, but uh, that's the healthiest way to charge your battery. So from 0%, basically 1%, 0%, uh, all the way back up to 100%, it took four hours and 47 minutes to charge this. So that's with the external battery connected at the same time, plugging it into the wall, and then I'm getting, it took four hours and 47 minutes to charge. So um, that being said, I think at home, I will always be charging it using the slow charger. Why not? Um, when I'm out on group rides, I might pick up a fast charger so that I can you know, get back up and going if I need to. Not sure yet really what I'm gonna do on that, but um, that's just something to note. It does take quite a long time. Now you can charge, if you want, you can buy a Greenworks battery um, charger and you can actually take this battery and put it on that external charger. So you could be charging that battery and then be charging your pint normally. And I'm guessing you're gonna do it in about half the time or so, maybe a little over two hours or something to be able to charge, have both of them back up to 100%.
Another thing to note when you're charging it is that when it actually gets to 100%, the board does not turn off like it normally would if you were just charging the internal battery. I don't think that'll really damage it or anything because there is a BMS, but I am just paying attention to it and making sure that I uh, disconnect it when it gets to 100% within a few minutes or something. I don't think you have to be like right there at that second or anything. Um, n nothing like that. So like I said, I absolutely love my Pint even more now with the extended battery. I definitely recommend looking into it as an option if you're someone that's looking for more range out of it. Uh, I'm gonna try in the future the fender mount, but right now I'm really liking the backpack mount. Um, when I did nosedive, the disconnect worked fine. <laughs> uh, everything kind of just went yard sale on me, uh, but the it was no problem, it just disconnected. There's no issue there at all, super simple. So that was nice. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, I would be happy to answer them and leave them down below and like and subscribe for more and I'll see you guys next time.